Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Dr. Dave Spencer here, Pastor Dave, just Dave's fine with me. Uh, from the Worship Center down in New Bedford, Massachusetts. We meet at the Marriott Hotel. Uh, and we welcome you. If you're on the area, just stop by. It's right on the waterfront every Sunday morning from 10 to 12. And I also have a program on Kingdom Purpose TV at 7.30 to 8 in the morning. And to get and to see that, you have to go on kingdompurposetv.com and you can get it there. Uh, Wednesday night, I have another radio program on Kingdom Purpose TV you know, slash radio. And you can hear the message. That's Wednesday evenings from 9 to 10. So uh, if you'd like, tune in, tune in. We're just so glad in this house of worship that we're doing everything we can to reach the masses, to go into all the world and just try and do what we can to encourage folk and let them know that uh, the Lord has not forgotten them and there is a place for them and just waiting for them to recognize that and come on home. Amen? Well, we're going to have a word of prayer then we're going to get into the word. Father, I thank you so much for who you are. Lord, another day with you. I thank you, Lord God, that uh, we are transformed, Lord, and renewing our mind through your word and getting closer and closer, Father, in understanding and the revelations that are released to us by the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray even now uh, for the listening audience, for something to happen in their lives through this word, uh, forewarned. And I pray, Father, for always our church family, Lord, those who are here today, I lift them up, Lord. I pray for their families and, Lord, their loved ones and friends, Lord. Just lift them up, Lord God. And let your glory fill their houses even now, Father, that the atmosphere, hallelujah, the atmosphere would begin to change right now, oh God. Just like a, a fog coming in off of the ocean, Lord, your, your fog with the glory it will fill, like it filled the church when in the book of Isaiah and the preachers couldn't even preach because it was so strong. So Lord, just be glorified this morning and thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're about to do. I surrender all, all to Jesus, you know, yes. my Savior. Amen. 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 Okay, so I hope you all feeling well. If you have a pen and a paper, I think it'd be good because uh, you know, I really don't have titles. I just like to Let's talk about it. That's my program. And just read, you know, read a portion of scripture that the Lord gives me and just you get your own you get your own title. You really do. Because there's things that are going to connect and you're going to connect with that nobody else is. So this is why it's important to uh, write things down. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, will you uh, open up to Mark, Mark chapter 13? Mark chapter 13. I'm going to begin in verse 1, and then we're just going to walk through it as the Holy Ghost gives me the uh, revelation. I'll bring it to you. And I have studied it. You know, you know, probably preach it for the, uh, time and time again. But this is what he has for us today. This is the breakfast of champions. Amen. Mark 13, verse 1. It says, As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. They were amazed, and I've been to the Wailing Wall a few times, and it is the, the stones. How did these stones get here? They're so massive. How did, how did they do it? You know, it's amazing to think about the architecture and, and how uh, they got it from the quarries to the center of town, basically. Amazing. So they were, like, you know, blown away by looking at it. And, uh, Look, teacher. And so they said, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. And, you know, today we see that a lot, too. People look at buildings and structures and, wow, look at that, and, and get all caught up in it, you know. And, yeah, they look nice. That's good. You know, not, nothing wrong with that. But 
Watch what Jesus says. Verse 2. Do you see all these great buildings? Replied Jesus. Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. And it happened when Rome came on the scene. All right? And if you read church history and look back in the Old Testament, the book of Daniel, how we prophesied these things. Amen? So it goes on in verse 3. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us, when will these things happen? See, now, this is why those guys <clears throat> had favor out of the 12, because they were hungry. They are always wanted to learn and grow and ask questions and things where, you know, I don't know if the other ones were just there and, you know, praise the Lord, they supported Jesus, but you don't hear much about them having a discussion with Jesus. But James, John, and Peter, Andrew, they did, all right? So uh, Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple. Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to be fulfilled? And Jesus said to them, and just write this down, watch out that no one deceives you. God hates deception. Mm -hmm. Hates oh, it. Hates it. Jesus told them, watch out. You know, he wouldn't warn them if it wasn't going to happen. And so that's a word for you right now. Watch out mm -hmm. that no one deceives you. See, because we're in that time now, we're in that day and age where the whole world is rocking. Jesus. The whole world is rocking. Sad. Some of you remember that song. <laughs> but it's true, right now, the whole world is rocking. And, you know, we're praying for Ukraine, we're, we're praying for Russia. There's other wars, too. There's men out there from America fighting battles all over the globe. There's, it's a mess, this world. And that's why the Lord sent us. And I'm going to tell you, his word says that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. So the thing Amen. is, you pray for the people of these nations, you see? Because the kingdom of God is around all of this. The whole universe is under the umbrella of the kingdom of, of God. You see? Mm -hmm. Heaven, right? So our mm -hmm. responsibility here on earth is once we get to know the Lord and get to understand the constitution of our kingdom, the Bible, to go and do likewise like Jesus did and minister to people and let them know, let them see the power of God. Amen. That means you as a believer, start laying your hands on people, start declaring and decreeing their health and healed. And yes. Just go ahead and do it by faith. You do it by faith. It's not you. You don't have to worry about it if it doesn't happen. Jesus said to do it. So just do it and let the rest up to him. Right? Amen. Amen. You got to be people of faith. Don't doubt. Don't be like Thomas. Don't doubt. Just go ahead and do it. You know, Listen, I, I helped facilitate in, uh, in a, a, a funeral the other day. And, you know, and I just, I just did. I just said, Lord, you know, if it be thy will to raise this young man up, you can do it. And so I'm asking you, too young to be leaving earth. He got things to do. And he was in the service of the Lord Amen. at the time when uh, he got promoted. So I'm good with that. And I guess God just, nope, he's going to stay with me. That's what he said, Dave, he's going to stay with me now. And you just keep going. But what I'm saying is you have to you have to do these things. You can't just read them and be in awe about them because you have the authority if you're a believer. You have the authority. And they will happen, especially if you have a pure heart and a pure conscience, right? Mm -hmm. you know, I, I hate, like, the, the stress and drama and those things that pull you away instead of having peace. In the kingdom of heaven, it's yes. peace. Yes. It's yeah. peace. There's not... There's no arguing and things like that. It's calm. It's peaceful. And that's how we need to live on earth because we are just visiting this planet, remember, right? Mm -hmm. We're not of this world. We're just visiting, see. We, we have a visiting. job to do. And so we've got to maintain a peaceful attitude. Hallelujah. A forgiving attitude. And, and make sure that we're doing all we can. And last week, I preached a message out of Philippians 4.8. It talks about think on these things that are pure and lovely and of good report. And then the Holy Ghost told me, yeah, Dave, but do that with a person, with, with a friend, with an enemy. Think about something good in their life, something that they did that was worth praising. And, you know, 
just because it's, it's the right thing to do, right? You just do it because it's, it's the right thing to do. Yeah. And you're lifting him up when you could be saying all kind of negative stuff and, you know, you know uh, 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 gaslighting him and then all these things, you know, you could be you could be going through unnecessary changes. Don't. Don't. Get away from that stuff. Yes. Get away from it. You you need to have your spirit and your your soul man under control, right? By your yeah. spirit. See? And it's hard to do that if you're in a turmoil, if you're in an environment where there's turmoil and intentions and you, no, it shouldn't be that way. I don't believe it anyway. Right? So so he said, again, watch out that no one deceives you. See? Many will come in my name. You hear that? Many will come in my name claiming I am he and will deceive many. Hmm? Not might deceive wow. many. Will deceive many. Many people, you know, they, they fall for anything. Listen, if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. And you need to stand on the rock. That's Jesus. Right? You're never alone. Right? He's all you'll ever need forever. I wrote a song called He's All You'll Ever Need Forever. The beginning and the end, he wow. sticks closer than a friend. Yeah. Believe it. Believe it. He's all you'll ever need forever. Through the devil's condemnation, he's all you'll ever need forever. Amen? So just remember that. He's with you all the time. And when people come and try to bamboozle you, mm -hmm, you see, this is why you have to know the word. If you're studying the word, the Holy Ghost is going to bring back what you need at that particular moment. You don't even have to think about it. Watch, let's go on. So, verse 7, again, he says, when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, right? This is where we're at right now in the world. This is where the world's at. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Amen. Don't be alarmed, believer. Amen. Nothing, no weapon formed against you is going to prosper Hallelujah. if you believe it, if you believe I that believe word. It. Right? And if you're about our father's business, like Jesus came down and went into a sin-soaked world and, and, and became the, uh, 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 the, the sacrifice for us. And so we're doing the same thing. Right? He, he kind of passed the baton and said, you got it. Run with it. Right? It's not complicated, people. It's not complicated. So he said here, look, when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, we're hearing now Ukraine and other places in the world where things are happening, pestilence, COVID, right? All this stuff, earthquakes, it's all it's all yeah, written. Right. It's all already been told. See? Now it's all upon us. He said here, when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Hallelujah. Don't be don't make it your your main topic. Right? Your main topic should be the power of God to help the people yes. that are in the trouble. Yes. Amen. Amen. And by faith, Amen. just believing and, and letting them know that he knows all about it. He knows what's going on. What's in, in, important to him is that you get right with him. Amen. Amen. You get right. And believers, we need to be out there living a kingdom lifestyle so that people who don't want to talk to us, at least they'll see it and they'll say, hey, you know, Every time I see the guy, I know that guy, that girl, they're about God. Amen? All right. So he says here, yeah, uh, there's going to be war. Do not be alarmed. Such things must take place. All right? They must take place. But the end is still to come. Okay? So that's what we're seeing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. you, look at, you look at the news and read the newspaper, and this is what we're reading in yep. the secular world. You see? All right? So he says here... Uh, uh, such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Listen, nation, verse 8, nation will rise against nation. Hmm? Russia, Ukraine, yeah. nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. You see it? He said, there will be earthquakes. We've, we're seeing all this. Earthquakes in various places. Right? You know, we see it going on in South America and there's so much we don't hear on the news that's going on. Places in California, earthquakes, earthquakes are happening. He said there will be earthquakes in various in various places and famines. Mm -hmm. Famines, what we with the COVID and, and different sicknesses that are around, famines. Mm -hmm. And he said these are the beginning of birth pains. These are just the beginning. Okay? Because it's going to get a lot, lot worse before it gets better. Mm -hmm. 
and not that Jesus wants it, our Father God wants it to be that way, but it's just that man in, in their selfish uh, a journey and, and need for power and greed and money and control, mm -hmm. a man's fighting against them, and, and he's not going to force anybody. He doesn't force people to, to come right. home. Right. He doesn't. If you want to stay out, did the prodigal uh, son's father go chasing him? No. And that is an illustration of God with us. When we leave him and go, we say, go. You know, you got my blessings, go. And, you know, but then stuff happens and you got to come home like the prodigal did. And we're the same way, right? Stuff happens in the world before you know the Lord. And then somehow you hear the good news of Jesus and what he's done. And uh, you make up your mind and say, you know something? I'm going home. <laughs> and what do you do? Like the prodigal son, I'm going to tell my father, I'm sorry for what I've done. I've sinned against heaven and, 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 and our father, God, and Jesus. I've been a rebellious person, and now I want to come home. And you know, his door is always open. Amen? And there's always a bed for you. <laughs> it's good. Hmm? So he goes on. You must be on God. See it? Verse 9. Now you need to highlight that. You must be on God. Right? He didn't say, I was going to be on God for you. I mean, he had, you have resources that you can call in from the kingdom of heaven. Right? You can bring them angels. You have authority through God's word to activate angels to, to help you because that's what they're here for. Right? To serve us. Heirs of salvation. Mm -hmm. Then he said, you must be on God. See? Why? Here's what's going to happen. And it's happening. You will be handed over to the local councils. And flogged in the synagogue. What is that talked about in the churches? Mm -hmm. Flog. People today flog with their words. Right? They try to discredit you and, and uh, <coughs> uh, destroy your reputation. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Oh, Amen? Amen. So he says here, you must be on God. Why? Because you will be handed over to the local councils. And this, of course, he's talking to the disciples, right? He's talking to the disciples. He says here, uh, you, you will be handed over to the local councils, right? Or police or whatever. And, and flogged in the synagogues of people in the church, right? Gossiping on account of me. You see that? He said, because you're mine, this is what's going to happen to you. And you know, I have always said it and know it that uh, the Lord showed me this years ago and, and the Holy Ghost said, Dave, you can tell how much anointing you have by how much persecution and trouble you're going through. Yes. He says, the more persecution, the major the blessing is that God wants you to do. You know, the thing that he wants you to do is very important. So the devil, of course, is going to come and, of course, use the closest to you. We talked about that, you know. Uh, in Matthew, right? How you know your hometown won't uh, recognize the gift of God on your life? Say your family won't recognize. Said even in your own home, they won't recognize it. If you're serious, if you're real serious about God, Amen. And so the devil will use anything to derail you, to prevent you from doing what God wants you to do. And listen, he's not after you. He's after the anointing on your life. That's what he's after. Mm -hmm. Okay, because he don't care about you. He don't care about no human. He he attacks us because God loves us and we're his child. And so he's going he's trying to kill God's children. And God isn't going for it. Amen. Okay. So mm -hmm. Just come to say hello. There are some things I'd like to know Are you 